Before having techniques for non-destructive imaging, like X-rays, paleontology was based mostly on destructive techniques. So in some cases, you are completely destroying the specimen. So the real question was to try to access internal anatomy without destroying the sample. And uh, for that, the big revolution was the uh, discovery of X-rays, and uh, originally just for radiographs, and very soon after the first radiograph for uh, medicine, it was rapidly used also for fossil imaging. Here what we are doing is synchrotron microtomography. In a way it is really close to what you do with medical scanner, but uh, with far more power and far higher resolution and far more contrast and more details. Synchrotron imaging for fossils uh, really make a, a big breakthrough because for the first time we are able to see a lot of internal structures that are completely invisible with conventional machines. The synchrotron beam is coming from this side. It's going through the sample and after it will go in the detector and here the X-rays will be converted into visible light and after you have a microscope system and this camera is a big CCD camera that is extremely sensitive and quite rapid. On such kind of samples we, will, we want to see different details so we can do the, the complete picture of the specimen at low resolution and after we can see any part of it at high resolution. So what we do for microtomography is for one angle we make a radiograph because the X-rays are going through the sample it's creating what we call the phase contrast effect. And, and after, you rotate the sample. And you will do something like 2,000 projections, so 2,000 radiographs during the rotation of the sample. And by using all these radiographs, we have uh, algorithms that will reconstruct virtual slices. And when you put all the virtual slices in a 3D system, you can have the virtual reconstruction of your sample with all the internal anatomy. So the study we published recently on uh, Archicebus acilis, uh, it's a very small primate. It was published in, in Nature recently. So this fossil, uh, this small primate is the smallest one we know so far. The body is only seven centimeters. The tail is 13 centimeters. This one is, um, is not the oldest primate, but it is by far the oldest primate skeleton. And I would not call it our far ancestor because it is very close to the base of our group but it is on the side of the group that is called the Tarsi form. So what we made here was a complete scan. And from this scan, we completely extracted all the bones. We put them together like that. So you have an, iso an isolated skeleton. And also uh, for different places, uh, some bones were lost. And we are able to use uh, the negative shape that was still in the rock. So by putting all that together, we are able to really reconstruct the complete skeleton. It's a printout of a burrow that we scanned at the ASRF when I was doing my postdoc in South Africa and where we discovered uh, two animals completely unrelated uh, and tombed in the burrow. And the main point was to understand why there are no obvious reasons why they would cohabitate. They are 250 million years old. Just after the what we call the Permo-Triassic mass extinction event, it was the most dramatic mass extinction event that life encountered. So it's the moment where life was recovering from that. The mammal-like reptile, the mammal forerunners, they survived the Permo-Triassic extinction and, uh, and we think that the fact that they were able to burrow was a, a key adaptation to survive the crisis. So when we discover it, it's a big piece of stone with maybe something inside. And if you want to study it, you have two options. You can break it or you can come to the ESRF and virtually extract what's enclosed inside the burrow. The first fossil was scanned here uh, end of 2000. And after it, it was so successful that uh, we never stopped. And now the paleontology became one of the most important scientific topics for the, the beamline uh, we are using, that is the uh, ID19 beamline.